Hey guys, what's up? Jed here. Welcome to another video. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. In today's video, we're going to be looking at functions. Now, for all intents and purposes at GCSE level, you just need to be aware that a function is similar to an equation, but it's written differently. So normally in an equation where you'd have y equals x plus 2, in a function, the y is replaced with an f of x. And it's really just notation, just the way we write things down. So the first thing you need to know about functions is how to input values into them and how to get the output value. So let me read this function to you. The function f has an input of x, which outputs the input plus 2. OK, so let's see how this works. Let's say I want to replace my x with a 2. This is what it's going to look like. The function now has an input of 2, and the input replaces the x, and you add 2 onto it, leaving us with an output of 4. So f of 2 is equal to 4. And that's pretty straightforward for inputs and outputs. Let's try another function. Here we have the function f, which has an input of x, and gives us an output of x plus 1, all squared, minus 2. So let's try an input of negative 2. And let's see what this looks like. It's a simple matter of replacing the x in your output expression with the input value assigned to the function. So it's going to be minus 2 plus 1. We square that and then subtract 2 from it. Bid mass applies when dealing with functions. So minus 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. And then we subtract 2 from that. And of course, the final answer is negative 1. So f of negative 2 is equal to negative 1. And that's how you input values into functions and write their output. OK, now let's look at the inverse of a function. The word inverse essentially means opposite. I'm going to show you the technique you need to use in order to take a function and get its inverse. I'm also going to show you the notation required, so how you write it. So let's begin. Step one, replace your f of x with a y. And this is simply just for ease of writing and seeing things as you're writing them. Step two, you are to swap the positions of y and x in this equation. And when I say swap the positions, I literally mean just take x and y and swap them around, leaving all operations where they would normally be. Step three, rearrange for y after you have swapped the position of x and y. So in this case, it's going to be minus 2, minus 2, which gives us y is equal to x minus 2. Now, once you have isolated the y, you are to replace the y with the following symbol, f minus 1, where the power would normally be, and then x. So this looks similar to our original f of x, except there's a minus 1 here. The original f of x means the function f. The f with the minus 1 means the inverse of f. And this is essentially it. This is the inverse function. And of course, I like to write things from left to right. i just like you to note, by the way, that this minus 1 isn't actually a power. It's just a symbol used. So don't think that this f to the minus 1 can be manipulated in the same way that you would manipulate variables in algebra. It's just a symbol, f to the minus 1, which means an inverse of a function. Now, I know what you might be thinking. If the original function was x plus 2 and an inverse of a function is the opposite, of course it's going to be x minus 2. So why would we go through this process just to get an inverse? Well, as the functions become more complicated, this method always works and will always get you the inverse of a function. Let's try a slightly more complicated example. OK, so here we have another function, still called f. And it is equal to 2x squared minus 3 all over 2. So let's find the inverse of this function. Step 1, rewrite your f of x as y. So we just do that. And we have 2x squared minus 3 over 2. Step 2, replace the position of the y and the x, keeping all operations the same. And that looks like this. And step 3, rearrange for y. So we're going to do times. 2 to both sides first to eliminate this 2 that's in the denominator. We're left with this. Our next step is to eliminate this minus 3. So we're going to add 3 to both sides. 
This leaves us with 2x plus 3 equals 2y squared. Our next step now is to divide both sides by 2. This leaves us with 2x plus 3 over 2 is equal to y squared. And now our final step, in order to get rid of the squared, we have to perform the opposite operation, which is square root. So I'm just going to go ahead and square root both sides. And this leaves us with the square root of 2x plus 3 over 2 is equal to y. Now we replace the y with f minus 1 of x. And there you have it. The inverse of the original function, which was 2x squared minus 3 over 2. Of course, I like to leave my final answer looking very clean. So I'm just going to write it from left to right. And that's going to be f to the minus 1 of x is equal to square root of 2x plus 3 over 2. And there you have it. That's how you find an inverse function. So I'm just going to go over it very quickly again. Step 1, replace f of x with y. Step 2, swap the positions of x and the y, leaving all of the operations in their respective places. Step 3, rearrange for y now. Step 4, once you've rearranged for y, replace the y with an f minus 1 of x for good notation. And there you have it. This is how you find the inverse of a function. Okay, so now we're going to look at composite functions. A composite function is essentially one function acting on another function. And this is how you would write it, f of g of x. So if you think about what's happening here, you can read it as follows. The function g of x is being fed into the function f. It's being input into the function f. Now, what does the function f do to input values? And it tells you right here in the original function f. The function f takes an input value, which has been labeled as x now. And what does it do? It outputs the input value, x, with 2 added onto it. So now, if we're taking g of x, which is this function here, x squared minus 1, and we're feeding it into f, what does f do to g of x? Well, f takes g of x and adds 2 to it. So this is going to be x squared minus 1 which is g of x. And now f is going to operate on this x squared minus 1. And what does f do to inputs? It takes them and it adds 2 to them. So it's going to take this g of x and it's going to add 2 to it. And if we simplify, we end up with x squared plus 1. And this is your composite function f g of x. Now let's try it the other way. So how does this work? Take your function f of x and use that as an input into g. So we're going to take our function f of x, which is x plus 2, and we are now going to take this x plus 2 and input it into the function g. What does the function g do to inputs? It takes an input and it outputs the input squared minus 1. So this x plus 2 now becomes our input for g. And what does g do? It takes the input, it squares it, and then it subtracts 1 from it. And there you have it. That's how you write composite functions. On a final note, we saw earlier that the inverse function of f of x, so f minus 1 of x, is equal to x minus 2. Something you should know about composite functions and inverse functions when you apply a function to its inverse, let's see what happens. So we're going to take the inverse function, which is x minus 2, and this becomes our input for f. And what does f do to inputs? It takes them and it adds 2 to them. So it takes the x minus 2 and it adds 2 to it. Let's see what we get. We end up with just an x. This means that applying a function to its inverse or the other way around for that matter, applying an inverse to an original function leaves you with the original input, x. So they cancel each other out. That's another way of saying it. So composite functions and inverse functions. If you apply a function to its inverse, it will cancel out, leaving you with the original input. Something very important. Anyway, guys, that's it for functions. I hope you've learned something from this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you and take care.